and we wanted to get right into this yep. heavyweight matchup. It felt like it a little bit on tape between maybe the two most, two of the toolsiest quarterbacks in the NFL, and Caleb Williams and Anthony Richardson. But there were some knockout punches, but there were some swings and misses too in this one. Big time. What did you see from this duo going head to head in Indy? Yeah, I mean, I think from both, you saw the potential, right? Like the potential to make plays uh, and and the arm strength and and just kind of the physical. Did you say the toolsiest of the toolsiest? What, what, I like what was that. The beginning there. That's why. I... Um, yeah, I, I got to use that. But uh, to me, you you saw some of like the the, the potential. Uh, but I think with both, you see the inconsistency, and, and that's that's what shows up. Um, when, when you watch both of these guys play. I do think from, from the Colts side with Anthony Richardson, I mean, his ability to run the football, there, there's no question about it, right? He, he can lower the boom. He had a good run, set them up for a score. He can throw it down the field, but, I mean, he's got to improve accuracy. You have to improve accuracy in the, in the intermediate passing game uh, if they're going to be more explosive uh, and, and certainly more efficient as an offense. And, and uh, with the way they're built, too, with guys like Michael Pittman Jr., right? Like, these, these are guys that eat in, in that intermediate passing game. And so, um, you know, I, I like to see a little bit more growth and consistency there. Chris Ballard, GM for them, talked about it. You know, this, this was kind of going to be the ride they were going to go through this season with, with Anthony Richardson, a little bit of the roller coaster, the highs and the lows, and, and trying to get a little bit more consistent every week. And, and I think they're still searching for that. Um, and then with Caleb Williams, I, I think there were positives to, to draw from this game. I honestly do. You know, I think interception in the flat late is, is something he's going to learn you just can't do, right? You can't throw to the sideline blind late and not think somebody's going to be driving on that football. Uh, and, and that really was costly for them. Um, I just, the offensive line play, Kyle, you can speak to it better than I can, but the offensive line play for the Bears has not been good enough through three weeks, right? And that puts it, that puts you in a position as a young quarterback um, to, to be in some tough spots. They have to protect better. I also think they've got to try and establish the run more. Like to ask him to throw throw the ball over 50 times a game, it's just, it, it's that's what it's going to look like for young players, right? Like, you know, even when you're in year 13, 14, 15, there might be two or three games a year where, where you've got to do that, right? And you've got to try and put the, the team on your shoulders. So I think, in, in a lot of ways, they're asking him to do a little bit too much too early. Um, but again, you know, I think there's enough signs of him when it does click, it looks like it's supposed to look. And I think he just needs to continue to improve his consistency. Matt, I think you make a great point about having to establish the run. And obviously, there's some things that, that needs fixing up there on the Bears offensive line. And this this space shuttle, this rocket already left Houston. It's it's in the it's in the upper atmosphere now. Nobody's coming on to this spaceship to save us. Nobody's coming off the spaceship. This is what we got. How are we going to do it? You go against a team 31st in total defense against the Colts, 32nd in the National Football League in the run game. What are we going to do, Matt? We're going to pound the rock, and we're going to give you opportunities to maybe find some of your favorite targets down the field. But 50-plus throws later and a really piss-poor running game later, and you get a loss on the road against the Colts, and everybody's got their hands in the air, palms up. But I think it's it starts with the offensive line. And, and to your point, when you got both your tackles getting bull rushed, one into your back, one into your into your lap, you know this as a quarterback, you know where the problems are on your offensive line. You know where you're going to start to fade a little bit as a passer. You know that the pocket's going to move. It's just a natural tendency. You've seen it time and time again. When you've got both sides of the hallway closing in on you, it's no good. Can you talk to me about that thought process when, you know, obviously they can't all be all-stars up front, Matt. So for Caleb Williams... What is that doing to his timing? Yeah, no. I, I mean, you said it, right? It's the old, who, I think Rick Pitino said it, like Larry Bird's not walking through that door. Robert Parrish isn't walking through that door. You're not getting all pros. Owen Cruz isn't coming back in, you know? And so you, you, you've you got to understand who you have up front. Uh, and I think that's easier to do as you become more of a veteran player where your mind is not on what coverage am I seeing what is my progression in, in the route combination? It's more on, okay, I know I'm getting covered two here. I know we got this concept. All right, we've got an issue here on the left side. I might need to just wiggle a little bit to my right and, and then climb up into the pocket. I think that's that's something that, that will come with experience. But to me, the, the concerning thing 
Well, it's, 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 it's really two things. Number one, in the run game, it's an unwillingness to run the football or it's the inability to run the football. And, and either one of those, whatever the, the, the case may be, to me, that part is a little bit concerning for the uh, Chicago Bears. The other thing is, you mentioned it, the one-on-one -on -one blocks for the tackles, et cetera, you know, those are hard. Those, those are difficult. The thing I have seen with them early is an inability to handle games, right? Meaning, me, meaning you know, we're going to stunt two defensive linemen this way and then wrap a defensive end all the way around. And, and Kyle, you know better than anybody, that comes – down to the offensive lineman being on the same page. It, it comes down to, to proper mechanics in terms of how you set, how you communicate, kind of passing things off. And to me, uh, you know, that's that's one of the things that I don't think is on Caleb, right? I, I think that is on the guys up front uh, that, that they need to sort that out and do a better job. Yeah, it's the biggest group on the field in terms of numbers. There's five alignment out there. Not only that, they're the biggest guys on the field. You're going to have the biggest impact on the football game outside of the quarterback. And also, you're a key determining factor in how he does. Passing off games, to your point, it's five guys, ten eyeballs, seeing through one set of eyes. And when you don't have the continuity and you don't have the confidence, everybody's worried about their assignment. You get tunnel vision. You're like, here's my three technique. I got to block my three technique. Next thing you know is he goes that way. Somebody else is coming. Don't get lost on the three technique. Get ready to help your buddy off. Snap him off. Get your eyes up and get ready. Keep it in front of you. They haven't done that with any success this year. It's a good point, Matt. I will say this about the Bears, though. Yeah. So they don't, they don't win the game. But I think they have to be a little bit more encouraged by what they saw from their quarterback than the flip side of the ball. 100%. Because with Caleb, we talked about, you know, they need to improve the running game, and that's obvious. But he just did the hardest thing you have to do as a quarterback, which is pass when everyone knows you're going to pass. Kind of that come from behind, everyone knows it's going to happen, and he didn't put the ball in harm's way. Whereas on the flip side of the coin, with Anthony Richardson, yeah, we know he's always going to be a monster in the running game. Yeah, we know that with Jonathan Taylor in that offensive line, they can still be a good offense. But all they need is just a few throws, man. Like, just hit a couple of these, and that offense is going to be explosive, but he still can't. So, Matt, is there, is there a way for quarterbacks to fix accuracy? I think it's one of those traits that, you know, from like a scouting perspective, we've often thought of it as almost immutable. You got it, you don't. But we've seen quarterbacks recently improve to some regard in their accuracy. Is this something we could see Anthony Richardson improve upon, even if he hasn't to this point? Well, I, yes, because, you know, I think I improved my accuracy as, you know, I think of, of it from like an individual standpoint. I, I think I got better as my career went on, right? And the focus was on, you know, my mechanics. And, and it really started from the ground up. It was, it was getting my feet in position to allow myself to deliver the football accurately and efficiently and not having to overcome things, right? Not having to, to kind of throw across your hips. Or, or be closed off to a target to my left, right? Is 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 like, let's get everything in line, right, to give us the best chance to deliver the ball accurately. And I think that's something that, you know, he he's going to continue to have to work on. But you got to make your layups, right? Like you you have to you have to make the open ones. You have to hit the easy stuff. And and to me, like that's where it has to start, right? It, it's just being willing to 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 work on on the very very basic things and, and and making sure that that you're accomplishing those things and being comfortable making those kind of plays right making the boring sexy that, that's what i say good quarterback play over time is making the boring sexy doing the little things right over and over and over again and then you kind of look up at the end of the game or the end of the season and you compiled all of these statistics and wins and you made the right plays uh kind of down in and down out and i I do think he can, you know, grow in that space. Um, and, and like with his skill set, I think he's so dynamic as a runner and as a deep ball thrower. Like he didn't have to be the best in the league in that space. He, he's he's got to be competent in that space. And, and if he, he can kind of close that gap and become competent in that space, he can be a really dynamic player. It's like a guy who's really long off the tee box or on a par, a par five, a guy that can go maybe three wood, three wood putter. Anthony Richardson has that ability to go deep, get the ball where he wants to go, but when it comes down to hitting that five-footer, and we know this about pro golfers, five-footers are gimmies. You know, four-footers yeah. are gimmies. It needs to become – maybe we need three-footers to become gimmies for Anthony Richardson. Then we'll start to see this thing moving in the right direction. But he has so much upside on that three-wood, on that driver. People are like, whoa, did you see that throw? Did you see that run that he made? Well, we got to make those putts. The gimmies, they got to happen for Anthony Richardson.
It's also why the last thing on him. Oh, the, the, the last thing on him is we got to hit less foul balls. You know, if we're in base, we got to hit less foul balls. Just get the ball and play. Yep. Right. Like let's let's keep the ball in between the white lines and, and go play. And, and I think if he does that, you know, this Colts team, they could be in, in the mix, right? Like they they they've been poor against the run in the first two weeks. They were better yesterday, right? So if he can be efficient in, in that space, I think they could be better off. That's the thing. It's like everything else is so good and like the upside of what he could be is so great so that many oohs and ahs. they just they're not going to be able to give up on him yeah. he, he might be this guy the rest of his career and i just struggle to see them giving up on him at least like the through this year next year whatnot and and it, they'd probably be silly too because if he hits that's how you get a josh allen right that's how you get those yep. top of the league sort of guys